Good afternoon. A <clears throat> um, little disappointed, obviously, in how we uh, continued to play throughout the course of the game. Came out strong. Um, thought we executed extremely high level, extremely high level. Um, the first and third drive, especially, uh, you know, uh, it's just uh, it's hard to sustain that play after play, and uh, they do a good job, not just with their you know great personnel, but um, their schemes as well. So you know, um, as the game went on, um, you know, I felt like in the second quarter there was a couple just easy, simple things that we do well that we missed opportunities on, but I thought in the third quarter, you know, we got in the locker room and said, hey, we're just, it's a one score game, and I thought in the third quarter. We came out with a lot of fight, um, even overcame a, a third and super long, or in the second and I think 29 on the first possession. And uh, I thought that showed a lot of grit with our guys. Uh, moved the ball down the field and, and uh, you know, just the drives, you know, when you have to sustain drives, I think we're on our own 15 by that time, you know, starting that drive uh, after the penalty. And, um, you know, it's hard to sustain drives against a really good defense. Uh, to, to finish in the in the end zone, um, you know, opportunity at the end, end of the third quarter, going to the fourth quarter as well, um, to try to put points on the board. There went for it on fourth down, but um, you know, just uh, it's hard to sustain, uh, you know, that level of execution that we had early in the game. And and I know our guys, you know, didn't quit and uh, kept fighting, um, you know, overcoming adversity at times too. So um, love our love our offense, love our team. Any questions? In a game like this, where you're almost looking in a mirror as far as scheming offensively, Jeff Brom obviously does very good as well. How important is it going to be to have longer sustained drives to keep the ball out of their hands? Yeah, I, I think we naturally do that. I think, you know, that's, that's I feel like, always been kind of an identity uh, of, our, of our offense is, um, you know, we have our opportunities where we have our explosive plays. Um, but we're not a fast tempo offense, you know, the ability here and there to do it. But I think, um, you know, trying to play a team game and, and to, to win. And I think um, because we, you know, execute at a high level and, and have a lot of completions, um, the clock keeps running and the game gets short. And, I, you know, I think you could argue that Saturday's game was probably a 11 possession game, um, um, you know, uh, 11, and that's counting the last drive at the very end too. So it's going to be they're going to be shortened games when I think when we're involved, um, you know, there's probably going to come down to close games, and we just got to make those plays at, at the critical times. But I think our our offense naturally keeps the other team off the field. You know, obviously you got to convert on third down and do all those things. But uh, the clock is usually running, and uh, we try to do our best to keep the defense fresh. Coach, this was really the first game after after that first those first two possessions where you guys you know, struggled to score right. in a long, long time. Yeah, uh, right. now this group has been so confident all year long about that. Do you have any concerns at all about uh, those last forty four minutes and uh, it carrying over this week at all? Yeah, no, you're exactly right. I just, you know, and I went and talked to these guys about that this morning. I said, you know, you know, let's let's give some respect to who we were playing to and. Um, when we're able to play our game, I think that's a lot of it. You know, when the games are close and um, we're able to kind of do what we need to do and then wait to hit our hit our big plays, um, that's when we're at our best. Um, you know, really, there's been two games that have gotten away from us: Ohio State and uh, and and this last game. You know, um, and those have been the two that we struggled the most. And so, um, I just told our guys, I said, you know, um, not a lot of other teams have. Move the ball very well. I think maybe Wisconsin had has really had success at all against Michigan. I think they had the ball a lot, you know. So I got to give credit where credit's due. Um, look ourselves in the mirror and figure out where we can get better, and just understand that we're still the same offense. So let's not let's not dig too deep into this, and let's just regroup, have that confidence. And again, I, I feel like there was confidence in the third quarter, and we moved the ball down the field, got to a fourth and one, converted. The holding call had to punt. The next drive. Moving the ball, uh, the next drive, I felt like, you know, we had a chance on a third and ten with D Hale along the sideline. Um, you know, tough call right there uh, with the catch, and then another drive at the end of the third quarter where we went the, the length of the field and uh, got down to the three. So I think there's there's still things within the game that happened where we moved the ball even after we had struggled in the second quarter, and um, you know, in the fourth quarter, the last you know eight minutes, I mean, we were just you know. 
trying to cut shorten the game, uh, kind of beat up there. So you know, just gotta gotta make sure we can don't let uh, Michigan beat us twice. I think is the is the biggest thing. So um, I looked at guys in the eyes and I felt like there was a lot of confidence. They believe in who we are, <clears throat> and that uh, you know next week's going to be back to you know what we've done all year long. Uh, Coach, what kind of uh, challenges does the Purdue defense uh, give to you? Yeah, I think, you know, there, that we've seen a lot of multiple looks uh, the last few weeks, um, and that's, again, what we're going to have. Uh, a lot of different looks uh, with the fronts and, and the coverages. Um, so it's nothing that we're not accustomed to. Um, just got to dial in on what, you know, Purdue likes to do and their tendencies, and, and then also just kind of figure out how they perceive us. I think that's really what it comes down to. You know, each team that we're getting, I think, because of our success, we're getting some pretty good shots thrown at us with uh, game plans, and uh, people are ready. And you know, um, you can see a plan in place with the, these teams that we're playing, and I'm sure Purdue will be the same. And uh, we just got to look to see, think about how are they going to perceive us? What are they going to try to stop? And we got to be able to counter. <laughs> if I know Matt Bedford is kind of a, I guess still to be determined for Saturday. If he can't go, is the preference to move Caleb to the left and, and have Devondre in there on the right? Is, and is that based on Caleb's experience or maybe where Devondre is more comfortable, a little bit of both? Yeah, I think it's both. And that's, you know, that's what we would, that's what we would do if Matt's not able to go. So, um, you know, that's what we went to in the game on Saturday. And, uh, you know, a lot of it's Devondre is much more comfortable. And, and uh, you know, Caleb has taken reps at different times throughout the year. Um, even before Matt was in that position, Caleb was kind of the guy that we would go to, uh, you know, in fall camp uh, to replace Kronk, you know. So um, that would be certainly uh, the adjustment, you know, that we would take. Uh, what are you learning about the history and the tradition of the rival game? And are there any rivalry games that you can kind of draw from? Right, yourself? yeah, no. Uh, I remember walking through the halls, uh, uh, the, you know, the end of January and, you um, or when you know, late January, and seeing signs on the wall, and uh, figuring that you know it was the last game of the season, and so those signs were just still in place. Well, they're still up, you know. So, uh, it's quick, you know, certainly didn't take long to understand, you know, how important this game is, uh, you know, for us, um, you know, and I'm sure for Purdue as well. And uh, um, you know, rivalries are fun; they're fun to be a part of. Uh, that's what college football is all about, and and sports in general. So, you know, excited to. Just, you know, I think the, the whole thing is you, you can't get too caught up in it. You got to understand that there's an intensity level, um, but you just got to do what you do. You got to go through the week, um, you know, give it everything you got. And, and again, it just comes down to, you know, hopefully our guys still being relaxed enough and not being tight because this is a rivalry game to where they can just cut it loose and, and play ball. And, and again, you give it everything you got and live with the, re live with the results. And that's, uh, that's how I approach every single game. That's how I've approached, uh, you know, 11 games so far this year. And uh, that's exactly how I'll approach this week. You know, preparation and doing your job throughout the course of the week will lead to confidence, and the confidence leads to execution on Saturdays. And, you know, I think that's been a pretty good formula for us. Uh, with Stevie, we don't know if he's available yet. I mean, in terms of Samson and Ronnie, uh, how much of those two guys, uh, how confident are you in their ability to pick things up? And Samson, how much has he grown? Right, yeah, I think Samson's, you know, this is the opportunity. and. And uh, getting him out there, you know, at the end of the game, you know, just uh, to get, I think he got eight or nine carries, you know, was, I thought, important um, just for him to feel. Yeah, you know, and you see him, what he can bring. Uh, when he hits someone, the, the pile usually is moving forward. You know, he's very heavy in his running style. Um, and it was, it was nice to see him sneak through a little seam and uh, pop a little explosive playoff on, on uh, Saturday night late in the game as well. So, or, or I guess that was the third quarter, no, it was the fourth quarter. But um, you know, I think they're uh, they're probably different styles uh, between Ronnie and uh, Samson. So um, certainly a lot of confidence. Uh, Ronnie's been on the field a lot for us. Um, you know, cr in critical moments, he's good in protection. Um, you know, both great in the in the pass game too. So um, really have no problems with those guys. Obviously, Stevie is who he is, and the experience factor and all of that is is is, is important. You know, it's something that if he cannot go, um, you know, that certainly that's a loss. Um, if Stevie can't go, I know earlier in the year you guys gave uh, David Ellis some 
some carries back there. Could he be a factor? And what does he bring as a guy with his ability with the, you know, after catching the ball, his receiver skills uh, right. at running back? Right, yeah, no, he is definitely uh, a guy that could be back there and feel very comfortable with him um, back there. And uh, I think a lot of it depends on how everything shakes out with all of our positions, you know, at the receiver, because he's, he's valuable and, and uh, just got kind of different guys at different spots that are um, kind of working through things. So um, he's, a, he's a very intriguing player for us uh, that we can use in, in a lot of spots. I have no problem him carrying, carrying the ball. Um, you know, he takes reps with the tailbacks in, our, in all our drills that we do uh, throughout the course of the week, and he's done that all year. Um, so have no problem with him playing there as well. So he's someone we'll have have to use in practice, um, you know, for for that op, you know, if that uh, situation comes up. You at thank you.